So this is just a short video on pH and the pKa. Okay. So to start with, what is pH? Okay. So pH is just a measurement of how many hydrogen ions there are in solution. So let's suppose we had a beaker. And all this is is just a measure of hydrogen ions, right? So usually we use the term whenever in regular chemistry we use the term molar, which is basically the number of moles over volume or liters most of the time that happens. So uh, regularly, so you can have hydrogen concentrations, as you know, a bracket that just means a hydrogen concentration. Let's just make up a random value of five, five molar. So this number is implying how many hydrogens there are per liter. So this implies that there's five moles of hydrogen per every one liter of solution. Now the pH is basically another way to measure, is another way to say how much hydrogen there are. So it's, people just made this a pH value up because sometimes hydrogen values they get really I know I said five but it gets really weird you get into like 10 to the negative 37 or 10 to the 54 so it's just a easy way to just to keep track so basically what you do is you take the negative log of whatever whatever number five for instance and that would be your answer so that's one thing that you should know so pH is nothing more than just a measure of how many hydrogens there are so a low pH corresponds to high hydrogen ions. So a lower pH means that there are more hydrogen ions in whatever solution. And a high pH means that there is less hydrogen ions, so it's a negative correlation. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing that you should know is something called pKa. Okay, to start with, let's start with Ka. So Ka is basically like the acid disassociation. Um, for example, let's take a random acid. We'll just say Hx. And as you know, an acid disassociates into hydrogen ion plus the conjugate base. Just to, just to, just to clarify, if we know this is an acid, a conjugate base this would be its conjugate base. Okay, so why is this an acid? Because whenever you dissolve it in whatever solution, it breaks down into hydrogen. So this increases its hydrogen concentration, so it lowers its pH. So uh, people want to know, okay, how is, suppose we have two acids. Suppose we have acid one, and suppose we have acid two. So which one's much more acidic, and we want to quantify it. And that quantifier is basically a pKa. So if we know the, the value of pKa of let's say in this one, right, if we know the pK of a certain acid and we know the pK of another acid, just by its numerical entity, we can figure out which one is much more acidic. And the thing to know is that the lower the pKa, so the lower the pKa means the much more acidic it is. What does that mean? The lower the pKa, the much more likely it will disassociate into hydrogens and increase the hydrogen concentration in volume, okay? And the higher its pKa value, that means it's less acidic. Let's give some examples. Let's do carboxylic acid. I, uh, let me just search up what the pKa of carboxylic acid is. Should be around two, maybe. Uh, like, let's just make up a random number. We'll just say this is two. And this is an amino acid. Remember, these are the groups that are also in amino acids. Let's say this is nine, okay? So what does this mean? Since the pKa is two and this pKa is nine, so 
So what this means is that this is much more acidic because the pK is lower and we know that the lower pK means much more acidic. So what does that mean? That it is much more willing to give up this hydrogen hydrogen ion that it has. So it will be a negative, right? So it will disassociate faster. Whereas this, this will disassociate, but it won't disassociate. You will need much more, as you'll get later on, you will need much more a pH to increase it. So this is, this will acidify faster, or disassociate faster. Okay, so is there a way to make sure that pH and pK are related? As in, like, what, hap what happens, how does one affect the other? Okay, so let's take, um, suppose we have a solution, okay? And suppose we have just, let's just say we have a carboxylic acid group that has a pKa of 2, as you know. Or I'm not sure if it's 2, I, I think it's 2. Uh, okay, so suppose we add some stuff in and we change the P, so we have this molecule, right? This carboxylic acid and its pKa is 2. And then you have the surroundings, right? The surrounding water in solution. So first, what happens if we have, let's say, a pH that is lower than, suppose the pH of the surrounding water, or the surrounding solution, let's say is 1. And what happens when the pH, let's say, um, pH is equal to 8 or something, something higher. So, so basically, what happens when it's lower and what happens when something is higher? So a thing to note is that, think about it, if there's low pH, that means there's m more hydrogen ions, right? And when a pH is high, that means there's less hydrogen ions. So what do you think will happen to this molecule that has a pK of 2? When there's more hydrogen ions, that means it will be pronated. That means it will be in this form, right? It will just stay like this. It's protonated, it's not disassociating. However, when there's less hydrogen ions, that means the pH is greater than the pKa. When the pH is greater than the pKa, that means that it will disassociate, right? So it will be in this form. Okay, and this is when the, this was when the pH was lower than the pKa, that it was in its native form. So that's how uh, pH and pKa can affect one another. So just to review, whenever you have a pKa that is lower or when the pH is higher than the pKa, that would mean that there's less hydrogen ions in solution. So the molecule will donate the hydrogen ions so it will be disassociated, right? And whenever the pH is lower than the pKa or when the pKa is higher than the pH, there are lots of hydrogen ions already in solution, so the pK will not really disassociate and it will just stay like this.